This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Greetings from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Welcome to a God's message from Evans Chapel, United Methodist Church. A church where everybody is somebody. And Jesus is Lord. Amen. 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 We are so excited that God has allowed us another opportunity to come back together again and worship together as the unified body of Christ. And we hope and pray that you, that uh this services on today would be a blessing in your life. Amen. Amen and amen. Let us uh move forward. We're going to have our opening song on this morning um from Reverend Timothy Wright. Trouble don't last always. Oh, that's 
Yes, indeed. Trouble don't last always. Amen. We thank God for that. Trouble don't last always. We're going to go to God in prayer. Father God, we just want to say thank you. We thank you for being so good to us. We thank you for sending your darling son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross. We thank you for your grace, Lord. Lord, we thank you just for allowing us to be able to come together one more time to fellowship with each other, even though we're not in a physical building, but we are still in your presence on this day. Lord, we just thank you just for being God all by yourself. We thank you for allowing us to be able to put food on our tables, put clothes on our backs. Lord, we thank you for just giving us life. Lord, we thank you for your church. Not only Evans Chapel United Methodist Church, but we thank you for all churches that have been established in your name. Lord, we ask that you will forgive us of all of our sins, creating us clean hearts and renew a right spirit within us, Lord. Lord, we ask that you will continue to look after us during this COVID-19 pandemic, Lord. Lord, we, 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 we know that you are still sitting on the throne and you are, that you are still in control. Even though we're going through it, we still have to say thank you because you allowed us to be up to witness this unusual time. Lord, we ask that you will look over us you know, the doctors, the uh, nursing staff, and all the medical staff that's working with our COVID-19 patients, Lord. Protect them right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we want to declare and decree uh, complete healing for many people this day in the name of Jesus. Lord, we ask that you will protect us, Lord, from it, Lord. Lord, we ask that you will... Cover all of the pastors that's leading your flock during these unusual times, Lord. Give us the wisdom that we need in order that we can lead your flock, Lord. Show us the way to go. Show us what we need to do. Show us how we need to lead, Lord. Lord, we are nothing without you, Lord. Lord, we ask that you would go into our communities. Touch your people right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we ask that there's some that more people this day, all over this nation and world, will surrender their lives to you and accept you as Lord and Savior and follow you, Lord. Lord, touch our government officials from the federal, state, and our local officials, Lord. Lord, touch them right now and give them the wisdom that's needed to be able to make the right decisions for our people. Lord, touch their hearts that they will remove politics and, 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 and instead lead by your promptings, Lord, by the Holy Spirit, Lord, because it's not about politics. It's about your people, Lord. It's about souls that you have created, Lord. Lord, we ask that you will, that those who are unemployed because of this, Lord, provide for them whatever they stand in need of right now, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Draw us closer to you, Lord. Lord, we are nothing without you, Lord. Help us to be the disciples you have called us to be, Lord. Lord, show, show us where to go. Show us what to say and what to do, Lord. Lord, we ask that you will anoint the scripture that will be read and anoint the message that will be proclaimed to your people, Lord. Uh, have your way, Lord. Decrease me and increase your way. It won't be me speaking or preaching, it'll be you, Lord, because it's all about you, Lord. These and other blessings we ask in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. Amen, amen, and amen. Amen. 
We're going to look at our scripture today. It's coming from the book of 1 Peter, the second chapter, verses 19 through 25. The book of 1 Peter, the second chapter, verses 19 through 25. And I'll be reading the New Revised Standard Version. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> and it reads, For it is a credit to you, if being aware of God, you endure pain while suffering unjustly. If you endure when you are beaten for doing wrong, what credit is that? But if you endure when you do right and suffer for it, you have God's approval. For to this you have been called because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example so that you, sh you shall follow in his steps. He committed no sin and no seat was found in his mouth. When he was abused, he did not return abuse. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but he entrusted himself to the one who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross, so that free from sins we might live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. For you were going astray like sheep, but now you have returned to the shepherd and guardians of your soul. May the Lord add a special blessing to the reader, hearers, but more importantly, the doers of his divine word. Amen, amen, and amen. I will use as a theme for today, a true disciple must suffer for Christ. A true disciple must suffer for Christ. My brothers and sisters, life throws so many trials and tribulations at us. We experience so many disappointments. We experience many heartbreaks. We experience many persecution. We experience many injustices. People have falsely accused us of many things. We have experienced all forms of hatred. Many people have been falsely convicted of crimes. Many innocent people are on death row. Friends have turned their backs on us. Many of us have experienced alienation from family members. Hard times hit us. Sometimes we experience that uh, in our minds and that the world is truly against us. And sometimes we just experience loneliness. Now, life can be extremely difficult at times. We don't always understand the things that are happening. Life can be unfair sometimes. But one thing that's for sure, we must be willing to suffer and endure many things for Christ because he was willing to suffer for us. Now, that leads us to our text. And looking at the 19th verse of 1 Peter 2nd chapter, it says, For it is a credit to you, if being aware of God, you endure pain while suffering unjustly. My brothers and sisters, you see, God will recognize you or acknowledge you for being mistreated especially if you are committed to following him, you will get credit on his behalf. God will bestow grace on those who suffer willingly for God's sake. Yes, when we go through trials and tribulations, God does uh, bestow his grace on us. Uh, so, because if God allows us to be mistreated, he will give us the grace to endure it. Looking at verse 20 and 21 of our text, it says, if you endure when you are beaten for doing wrong, what credit is that? But if you endure when you do right and suffer for it, 
you have God's approval. For to this you have been called because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example so that you shall follow in his steps. My brothers and sisters, no reward awaits those who receive punishment for their sins. You see, uh, when we sin, we have earned our punishment. In other words, don't think that you can continue to live a life that's not pleasing to God and expect him to continue to reward us. God will punish us for our sins. Just like when children disobey their parents, they will receive their punishment. You see, God does not reward bad behavior. You see, the blessing of God's grace is reserved for those who patiently endure undeserved punishment. Peter was telling these Christians that as a community of faith, as well as individuals, they have been called by God to follow Christ's example in their suffering. The same is with us today. If you want to follow Christ, uh, you must follow his examples in your suffering. And that goes for me as well. <coughs> we must not go around complaining. Christ came not only to redeem us, but also to set an example as to how we are to live. Therefore, like a child in school, we need to do our best to model our teacher, which is Jesus Christ. Matthew 16, 24 said, Jesus told his disciples, if you want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. My brothers and sisters, we must be willing to deny our comfort, our wants, our likes, and our agenda and follow in Jesus' footsteps. Sometimes it feels like the journey is lonely, but I'm here to let you know that Jesus is walking with us each and every single day. Moving on to our text in verse 22 and 23 of 1 Peter's second chapter, uh, Peter said, he committed no sin and no deceit was found in his mouth. When he was abused, he did not return abuse. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but he entrusted himself to the one who judges justly. My brothers and sisters, the lack of sin in Jesus' life was the key in his redemptive ministry. Jesus died on the cross for the salvation of the world. Jesus was the, was the perfect lamb of God. You see, Jesus also spoke only the truth because the truth came from the Father. Jesus was not manipulative. Jesus could not lie because he was and he still is holy. Jesus said that he is the truth. Even when he endured mistreatment, he did not complain or try to manipulate the people to rescue him from his persecution. Matthew, looking at Matthew 27, 11 through 14, it says this was after Jesus was arrested. When, now Jesus stood before the governor and the governor asked him, are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, you say so. But when he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he did not answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many accusations they make against you? But he gave him no answer, not even a single charge, so that the governor was greatly amazed. My brothers and sisters, instead of protesting the unrighteous judgment posed on him by the wicked men, Jesus entrusted himself to the judgment of the Father, who sees all, knows all, and can be depended on to judge righteously. This was in keeping with Jesus' instruction to his disciple. Here are other commands from Jesus. Matthew 5, 39 said, But I say to you, do not resist an evildoer, but if anyone strikes you on the right cheek, Turn the other also. And in uh, the book of Luke, the sixth chapter, verses 27, 28, uh, Jesus said, 
But I say to you that listen, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who abuse you. And on the cross, Jesus put this principle into action, uh, praying in Luke 23 and 34, that's when he said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. My brothers and sisters, no matter how people treat us, we must still demonstrate God's love to them. Jesus gave us the blueprint. I know it's hard, but we must ask the Holy Spirit to help us to love everyone, even those who treat us unjustly. And moving on to verse 24 of our text in 1 Peter 2nd chapter, it says, he himself bore our sins in his body on the cross, so that free from sins we might live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. You see, my brothers and sisters, Jesus nailed our sins on the cross so that we are free from our sins. Because of Jesus' death on the cross, we can live righteous. Remember that we are righteous by the blood of Jesus. We are spiritually healed by the blood of Jesus. We are saved by the blood of Jesus. Moving on to verse 25 of our text. It says, For you were going astray like sheep, but now you have returned to the shepherds and guardians of your soul. Here, my brothers and sisters, see, this is an allusion to Isaiah 53 and 6 that said, All we like sheep have gone astray. We have all turned to their own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. What this scripture is saying loud and clear is, we all are sinners. Don't ever go around thinking that that you are perfect. None of us are perfect. As Romans 3, 23 and 24 said, since all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, they are not justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Again, my brothers and sisters, we are like sheep. We are like the sheep. You see, sheep were not very smart and they were and apps and if absent from good leadership were inclined to wander away on their own. They were defenseless against predators such as lions and bears. They needed a shepherd to lead them to water and pastures and to guard them against a host of dangers. Just that same way to us. We do stray. We do go down the wrong path sometime. We don't always do everything right. In the New Testament, you see, Jesus referred to himself as the good shepherd who lays down his life for his sheep. You will find that in John 10 and 2. Even though, my brothers and sisters, we stray, we should be thankful that we can turn back to Jesus, our good shepherd. He is our protector. He is our shield. He is our healer. He does lead us to righteousness, and he is our key to salvation. In closing, just know that when you suffer for Jesus, you can take comfort that you serve a man that loves us. Just know that you are not suffering alone. You see, Jesus is suffering with us. You, we are not comfortless. Jesus understands our pain. Jesus cries with us. No matter how people treat you, God still loves you. When people persecute you, God loves you. When people hate you, God loves you. When you are lonely, God loves you. And you are not alone because God is with you. When you lose your job, God loves you and will provide everything that you need. When you are sick, God loves you and he is a healer. When you are in trouble, 
God loves you and he is a deliverer. We, as, even as we are in the midst of COVID-19, God loves all of us. He is a just God. We don't have to understand um, uh, that what we, whatever it is that we are dealing with, no matter what. Remember two things as we go on through our trials and tribulations, and especially during this pandemic time. Number one, God is sovereign. And number two, God loves us. When, when we are suffering, let's count it all joy. If you have a relationship with Jesus, just know that trouble don't last always. If we die with Jesus, we will live with Jesus. That means we will spend eternity with Jesus. Don't give up. Keep your hope in Jesus. Each day that we live will draw us closer to the day of our eternal salvation. Now that's the good news. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for your blood that saved all of us that have accepted you. I'm looking forward to the day where I would say, as Paul told Timothy in 2 Timothy 4, 6 and 8, 6 to 8. As for me, I am already being poured out as a libation, and the time of my de departure has come. I have fought the good fight. I have finished my uh, the finish the race. I have kept the faith. From now on, there is reserved for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me on that day. And not only to me, but also to all who long for his appearing. I'm here to let you know that even though uh, you, we might be suffering, I'm really that Jesus has gone back and prepare a place for us. We don't have to worry about how people treat us because we got a man who sits high, who looks low, who loves us, who will be there for us, who will continue to protect us. I'm here to let you know that if you suffer for Jesus, you will get your reward. I'm here to let you know that it is, life is not always easy, but Jesus just, just is the man you can give your burdens to. It's the man who will carry your burdens. I understand that it's Jesus. It's a man that if you fit, if you have need somebody to cry on the shoulder, he is that man. If you need someone to talk to you in the midnight hour, he is that man. If you're looking for someone to turn to when everybody have turned their backs on you, Jesus is the man. So I'm here to let you know that we don't have to worry about what's going on in this earth because Jesus died on the cross for each and every last one of us. And he got out of the grave. He said, all power in heaven and earth is in his hand. So everything is under his control. We don't understand why we may be dealing with COVID-19, but I'm here to let you know that God allowed it for his purpose. As I say last week, I believe that this is part of our rebirth of the new of our churches. And I believe it's also allowing us church folks to go through a spiritual cleansing because we've strayed a little too far. We done done, we, we, we live the life that we want to live, but now it's time for us to live for Jesus. It's time for us to recommit our lives to Jesus. Amen. Amen. And amen. I hope and pray that this that you have been blessed by our message. But I could not conclude without opening the doors of the church and offer an invitation to Christian discipleship. 
If anyone that don't know Jesus and the pardon of your sin, today is a good day. Yeah, today is a day that you can surrender your life to Jesus. Give him your life. And if you give him your life and trust your life to Jesus, even during the difficult periods of our lives, Jesus will give us the grace to endure it. He loves us. There's his, he got room for all of us. There's, 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 there's never enough room. There's plenty of room because Jesus wants, wants to welcome everybody into his life. Is there, will there be one? That they're, they're ready to to render their lives to Jesus. If you if you are willing to surrender your life to Jesus today, is a good day. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. So if you're looking for a church home, Evans Chapel. Located on 814 Central Street in Bell Zone, it's a place for you. But if not every chapel, you can uh, uh, connect with the uh, inner church. Uh, that cause that that's, that's 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 waiting and ready to receive you. So what? So I I, I uh, advise you to don't wait till tomorrow. Today. Is a good day. As we, as we, you know, as we focus our hearts on Jesus, let us uh, hear our the song from um, "I'm Available to You" from Reverend Milton Bronson.
We must make ourselves available for God. We must make ourselves available to be used by God. There's much work to be done in the vineyard. The harvest is plentiful, but the labors are few. We thank God for this day, and we thank God that you're able to take time out to, uh, to worship with us at Evans Chapel United Methodist Church. Uh, church where everybody is somebody and Jesus is Lord. And I want to also appeal to you, do not neglect to give your tithes and offerings uh, if you are able to do it because God is, if God is blessing you, you must uh, give uh, your tithes and offerings back to God. And for those who want to give donations to Evans Chapel, you can give it to Evans Chapel United Methodist Church P.O. Box 773, Bell Zona, Mississippi, 39038. Again, P.O. Box 773, Bell Zona, Mississippi, zip code 39038. And I hope and trust that you enjoy the rest of your day. So let us close with our benediction. May the God of peace himself sanctify you completely and may your whole spirit and soul and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He who calls you is faithful. He will surely do it. Amen, amen, and amen. Be blessed. You may go in peace and allow the, and, and invite the Holy Spirit to dwell with you each and every single day. Be blessed.